Welcome. Chris here from King of the Attic. Uh, we're going to discuss large format audio recording boards, generally analog. Um, just an introduction for the novice. Um, basically, when we're talking large format, it's generally an indication that the functions tend to be um, more spread out, more knobs, more dials, um, because they basically perform a specific function rather than multi-functions when you have digital type of boards that have layering or you know so, some sort of a, a rotary dial that, that does multiple things on top of that and then of course they tend to be smaller because you have multi-function knobs that have multi-functions versus dedicated knobs and switches that are basically doing maybe one or two things but in an analog mode there then tends to be more of them so um, that's going to be our main difference as far as what we consider to be a large format mixer. Um, so we say large format. Um, generally, they do tend to be large um, just because the knobs, dials, and switches take up more room. And, of course, the more channels you get, then, of course, they do get large. But if you had a modest um, mixer with just a few channels in it, it could be full function and have full-size knobs and dials and whatnot on it, and it wouldn't necessarily be large but larger probably than its counterpart that was digital so when we say large format we're talking more of the number of dials and functions that are, that are more uh, specific or individual as opposed to something that's going to be multi-function um, so get, getting into larger mixers um, we're going to get into the um, probably the realization that um, if you're going to go and buy one and and you maybe you're interested in it and like a, a large board or whatever uh, us guys that are into them i mean you know we love them it's just, it's just like art to us so you go and get some great big nice big mixer mess with that's great but depending on your needs where you're going to put it how you're going to move it around if you're going to move it around if it's at home in a recording studio or if you're going to use it for pa work all these things come into consideration to say well uh what do you, you know what is going to be your specific purpose for this unit but if you're a hobbyist or you want to start recording with it or whatever and you want to get to something everybody likes it you know a nice bigger uh, console to, to sit at um and, and that's nice um so there again i would just say basically just a, a word to the wise make sure it's going to fit where you want to put it it may sound silly but uh many a time you know I, i've owned many 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 consoles boards mixers whatever you want to call them sometimes your eyes uh, get the best view and then all of a sudden you have to decide where you're going to put it <laughs> and you may have to make a, a decision about how you're going to get it in or what doors you're going to take off or what windows you're going to take out to get something in you might be surprised so anyways if you are considering something of a fairly large size um, make sure you're going to be able to get it wherever you want to get it uh, it can be deceiving because uh, you know a, a recording mixer console whatever you want to call it could be about yay long about yay wide and that seems pretty good and, and most of them are, are going to be maybe about that deep if it's more of what we call a board or a mixer compared to something that's a console that has legs and a pedestal um, so if it's uh, a reasonable size it will fit in most houses but bear in mind if you're going downstairs turning corners uh, you know what, what, what your uh, basement is like or down the bottom of the stairs if it turns to go to different rooms and you have different uh, narrow hallways or whatever with doorways it may not turn a corner uh, once once it reaches a certain length uh, even though you kind of play with it a certain way you may not be able to navigate uh, you know close corners down to the bottom of stairs or, or, or so anyway, give it some thought and you'll have to see. Um, most times, um, when you're getting a, a longer board, you figure, oh, that's great, it's only, it's only this big. But if you stand that up on end, and it's fairly large, you may not be able to stand it up on end to get it through a doorway this way, because it's too long, basically, you know, basically either to fit through the door when it's up on end, or you're not able to get it up on end because of some clearance problems on stairs or whatever. So there again, you may have this big long board and you figure, well, you're going to scoot that right in. But if you have to put it up on end, turn it or whatever, check your dimensions. It can be deceiving. Anyways, big boards are fun and I, and I love them, but just some, some food for thought. Make sure it's going to go where you want to put it. Um, the other brief thing that we're going to say is desks, mixers, consoles, 
basically all, all the same thing. They all have different terminology. So if you're a novice and, and you're just get, getting in on this format right now, um, you're basically talking about the same thing. A mixer for, for us rock and roll, um, road guys or whatever. We, a mixer, we usually call it a board because it t tends to be long. You get a lot of channels. It's fairly narrow uh, in depth. Or what, and it looks more like an aircraft carrier. And it looks more like a board, hence the terminology board. But um, And most um, recording consoles, they're generally bigger in nature. And they do have some kind of a pedestal or something that you sit on. They could be more cumbersome. Um, they're sometimes they're all one unit. Sometimes they, they come in pieces or whatever. But the bottom line is there. They probably call it a console because it may have had a pedestal or it looks more, you know, like a desk or, or, or an installation. So basically, they can be the same thing, but more often than not, a recording console is, is going to be on something and a, and a recording mixer or board is either going to be in a road case or you're just going to kind of skim it in, skim it out because it's got to get in and out different places so they do tend to be smaller than a recording console but they can and basically are the same thing. Now desk is more of a UK terminology, old school Basically, they call it back because back in the old days, you used to sit on a desk. If you want a radio station and you're doing whatever, you had your mixing desk and you basically just set it on a desk. So they, they call mixers, consoles, desks. Basically, they're again all the same, basically the same thing. They're basically almost all the same. They vary in size or whatever, but they call almost anything a mixing desk. And it could be uh, you know, a mixer the, the size of an aircraft carrier, and they still call it a mixing desk. Or sometimes you've got a little wee mixer and they'll still call it a mixing desk because you're sitting at a desk to use it. So just some terminology, if you're just getting into it as a novice and you start to see some of these terminologies, they go, what the heck is the difference? Well, the, the basic is basically, you're just calling it something else. Now, um, recording boards, PA boards, um, very general. Uh, they can and very often do the same things. Uh, in, in any price point um, of, a, of a board or a mixer, whatever you want to call it, um, if it's a high quality unit, a front house board or PA board can easily record with the same quality as most recording boards at that same price point. It's just a difference in some of the functions of the unit. And there again, recording boards can be used for PA boards, but sometimes they tend to have different functions and whatever. So they tend to gear more towards recording and hence the other ones are more towards PA. They can do the same things. The basic function, and we won't dwell on it too long, the major distinction in the past was a recording board, uh, when you put it on solo, the channel that you were trying to solo or listen to separately, everything else would cut out so that you could hear that because you're in a recording environment and you want to solo in on something and you want to hear it separately so you can make some adjustments to it in the control room which generally a different zone than, than out on the main floor or what's going to the recorder. So the solo function on that would basically cancel everything out so that you could hear one thing on a separate zone, generally the control room. A PA board or a commercial mixing board, concert, bars, whatever, you got a band playing and you want to solo in on something to see the level, you don't want the rest of the band cutting out. So most solos on quote PA boards, you either look at a, at a, at a meter or an indication of some sort or listen through headphones or whatever and you can solo watching it or orally listening to it but it's not going to cut out the sound from the other instruments. So that was the difference back in the past before they really made them very similar, uh, that was your, your basic function. You had to be careful that way. Most major um, audio production boards or PA boards or concert boards, they got a function that allows you to switch to say, hey, when I'm here in a live situation and I put it on solo, I don't want everything in the background to cut out. I want to leave it all on, but I just want to visually see what's going on. And vice versa with a recording board, if you don't want it to cut everything out, it won't. So those functions have generally overlapped, but traditionally over the years, there, there was some separate distinctions. Other than that, there's some terminologies, the way things are labeled on them or whatever. But they can do the same thing, and they're generally in a high-quality unit. One would be just as, uh, say, um, technically good as the other one, if you want to call it that. Um, or not necessarily superior, and unless you get into very, very high-end uh, re recording boards, consoles, whatever you want to call them, then, of course, they gear things to other um, different criteria, different specs, and they record things maybe at, you know, at a much higher um, quality level, uh, but 
and you're really talking severe. I mean, you're talking mega, mega, mega thousands of dollars for the difference that they put into these boards to do uh, that specific chore. But generally speaking, um, for the most part, if you've got a high quality um, front house mixing board and you're doing live bands or whatever you're doing or even some vocals in, in your bedroom or whatever, your basement, uh, you're probably not going to hear that much difference there. Again, you can get all kinds of tube preamps and different things to, to compensate for that and give you that higher quality sound. So, uh, I mean, uh, that's a topic that we'll get into later. But basically, just generally, generally speaking, most high quality boards are capable of doing both unless you have some very specific high-end needs. Then, of course, you're going to pay a price for that. So, anyways, as a novice, if you're looking, that's basically about it. We're talking large format audio and analog boards uh, and that's basically the terminologies that we're going to use going forward and it's fairly straightforward so um, th that's about it for this one we're going to get into things as we move along a little bit more in depth that'll give you just a little bit of kind of analog boards one-on-one as far as size and basically what some of the terminologies and functions are. So as you're lo looking through, maybe shopping around for a board or something, you get some idea when you're looking at these boards like what they're talking about, right? So that will kind of get you on board. So moving forward, uh, keep in touch with us. Um, you know, send, send us you know, your comments or whatever. We're right here on YouTube. And we're going to get into some very in-depth um, things um, with the recording processes and these analog boards. And we're going to cover them from A to Z, even take modules out, show you, show you what things are like. We're going to do everything right up to the highest degree of engineering as far as, as we want to take it. For now, we're just trying to um, get everybody on board. If you're a novice and you want to follow us through, we'd like you to kind of know where we're at if we're going forward. And for, for some of you engineers and, and guys that are really pros, this is probably boring for you but we just want to introduce some of these other people that maybe want to get on board and see what we're doing so we'll try to cut all this short and then move on to things of, of a more technical uh, nature um, so until next time this is Chris King of the Attic see you later